What's going on, Imperials? It's Emperor Cubone here. Some people say every Pokémon ever should evolve. I don't necessarily agree, I think there are plenty of perfectly solid one-offs, but even if most Pokémon do benefit from gaining a new, more powerful change, some of them make a bit too far of a jump. You might say that's the point of some of them, and that is true, however, most Pokémon have a more gradual progression. For instance, Whismur straight to Exploud would be a little jarring, so having Loudred there to bridge the gap helps out a lot. Or Bounce Wheat to Tsarina would just be way too much. So, which other Pokémon lines could use an impromptu middle evolution to ease their transition? Honestly, what made me think of this in the first place was looking at Shroomish and Breloom. I really like Breloom, it's a good Pokémon to pick up in the Hoenn region, but it's a pretty long way to go from a tiny mushroom with feet to a fighting-type fungus raptor. So I thought that they might be a good candidate to see a middle evolution be added into the mix. Now really, if this were to happen, there would likely be a custom-made stage, and obviously they wouldn't let this happen anyway, but I'm inclined to look at the Pokémon that we've already gotten to fill these roles. So for an in-between of these two, I think it's reasonable to look at the other Mushroom Pokémon. And while some don't really fit, I think we could believably plant Shinotic right in the middle. Now, I don't much care for Shinotic, but in this setup, it would make sense as to why its limbs are so spindly, because it has only just grown them from when it was only a head on the ground. Now, obviously, it wouldn't really flow for this line to turn into a fairy and then into a fighting type, so I will reserve the right to change typings. And even if it might fit better in a green color, I think a small mushroom person would be a nice bridge from the rather overly simplistic Shroomish to the dynamic Breloom while still being very on theme. And there are some other grass types that could probably use this treatment, like maybe Petalil, especially when considering the big gap while looking at the long-legged Hisuian version. So another grass lady, like maybe Bell Awesome or Steeny, or hey, even the regular Lilligant would be believable as an in-between for the base and regional forms as an evolution. And of course, there are some Pokémon that could probably use a bit of help, like Execute, but are far too off the wall to find a reasonable mediator, since I kind of doubt Phalanx is exactly a tree hugger. But I think we can all agree that Combi could use some help since it's such a weak Pokémon that is forced to stay that way most of the time, with very few ever getting the chance to become a Vespaquin. And even then, it's a fairly widespread from a cluster of faces with wings to a regal ruler of the Hive. So I feel like this can be alleviated by adding Beedrill into the mix. This seamlessly keeps the bee theme throughout, and makes the expansive growth of Vespaquin not all that out of place when Beedrill introduces us to a more substantial but streamlined body. Also, you could still keep the female exclusive evolution in the final stage if you want, but it wouldn't be such a punishment now if you could at least turn into a usable Pokémon in your own right. Now, this would change Beedrill into a bug and flying type, and no, I'm not saying that we should just keep Kakuna from ever evolving. It's more just a hypothetical, as if the Weedle line never existed, but we did have this design laying around, so we might as well use it to lighten Kumbi's load. But while we're on bug, I do think that Wimpod is another prime candidate for this exercise. Of course, you could argue that the point of this Pokémon is to have such a massive gulf between its forms, since it is basically the new Magikarp, but Golisopod is just a little too beastly and amazing, given how timid and frail it used to be. So, what other bug types could strike that middle ground? Well, you gotta go with me here, but I would say Ferramosa. Just push to the back of your mind that it's an Ultra Beast, because that doesn't really matter here. We're primarily looking at how it could be a missing link, and in this regard, it comes out as surprisingly fitting. It's a similar overall whitish gray color, and its segmented body also resembles the plates on the sea dwelling bugs. Really, all you would have to do is color the antenna a light purple color, and then that would be a perfect match. Her so-called hair in the back even has a similar body shape to Wimpod carrying over that shell. Yet, her shoes could also believably lead into Golisopod's massive boots. That's pretty crazy. And I'm actually a big fan of the little Wimpod gaining some humanoid characteristics and then growing into the full-on beast mode, sprouting even more limbs and becoming even taller, which Golisopod already is. So really, just some purple highlights and the added water type would make Ferramosa a decent relative to the Wimpod family, although you maybe would argue that it's better off as a branched evolution or something. Either that, or we could have a cocoon-style thing with Shellgon stepping in. A more common sight of the seas would be the Wingle and Pelipper line, basically combining all of the annoyance of Tentacool and Zubat, but they're really not that bad of Pokémon. 
Pelipper in particular is surprisingly useful, especially with the rain setup. However, a teeny little albatross is quite different from a much larger pelican. However, those are not the only waterfowl to consider. In fact, I think Cramorant would slide in effortlessly well to bridge the other two. It's already got the typing, even if inverted, but Cramorant's whole thing is diving into the water to get prey, just like the other two birds do. It's also got the yellow on the beak and the blue feathers. Sure, it is a bit more blue than the others had, so you may say that disqualifies them. Oh yeah, because Pokémon have never just changed colors in the middle of their evolutions before. But Cramorant not only has the exact same gender ratio as the Wingle line, but the Gulp Pokémon stats are a perfect middle ground for bringing up the defenses and attacks from the poor, frail, but speedy Wingle, while also slowing down to lead into the lethargic but bulkier Pelipper. The worst thing throwing this off is the fact that Cramorant has a neck and the other two don't. But I think everything else from the wings and even the heights of these birds line up impeccably to allow them to be one big happy family. Now, I think we can all agree that Bergmite is a far cry from where it ends up as Avalug, but what could we do to smooth it over? Well, I'm actually going to look at the Hisuian form that's part rock type, because it's even further away and lets us have a bit more wiggle room. But the pointed tip of the iceberg needs a way to flatten out to become a roaming ice shelf, and I think perhaps Bulldor could work. Once again, the deep blue color may be slightly off, but the overall shapes seem to line up. Because it is still pointed, but also slants out more so that you could realistically see how it was eroded down. And even the mouth becomes more developed from the initial Bergmite to grow into the giant snow plows that we see in its past variant form. Plus, the rock type already being there helps, so you just have to slap some ice onto it, maybe add a layer of frost on the top or something, and you're good. Or at the very least, it would be a believable fusion between the two, making the gargantuan Avalug not so far out of left field in its own line. And finally, we all know the new very weak gimmick Pokémon Gimme Ghoul, right? Of course you do, you're still collecting coins everywhere. But that's a lot of buildup from the minuscule base stage to a man literally made of money. So I'm wondering if we could take a smaller step first to Magearna. Gimme Ghoul already looks like a little robot thing with a sort of metallic body and it doesn't seem like a ghost at all, but that's a whole different topic, I suppose. The point is that a small robot turning into a more regular sized robot works. You have to admit that even their eyes do bear certain similarities. And I actually really like the idea of first going to silver and then reaching gold in the final stage, sort of like moving up the medal stand to finally win first place at an award ceremony. We would of course have to switch Magearna to ghost and steel typing, but even the gold highlights on it hinting at what's to come just works, even if it would be less obviously made out of coins like the other two. So if you could evolve Gimme Ghoul once with maybe half of the overall investment required with the 1,000 coins, it would really help to keep them from being near useless for so long in the Paldea region. So those are just some Pokémon that are far enough away that they could use a middle stage, and the existing Pokémon that could fill in that gulf. Which Pokémon do you think could bridge the gap as a middle evolution? Let me know down in the comments! Also be sure to leave a like, share this video, and subscribe so that you too can become an Imperial today! And until next time, stay grounded.